Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Dennis Doda. Dennis, nice to have you with us here today. I always learn something when I fill in, so I'm glad to be here. Isn't it the truth? If you could just remember everything you learned on this program. Volumes. <laughs> A recent morbidity and mortality weekly report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention found that high school students who had poor grades are more likely to try risky health behaviors than students who get better grades. The report showed that regardless of sex, race, or grade level, high school students who reported lower academic marks also reported greater health risk behaviors. Substance use, violence, poor nutrition, sexual activity, and lack of physical activity. So really an interesting glimpse at the young people of our country. And naturally, we'd like to know what the results mean for schools, what they might mean for parents. And joining us on the phone, we are lucky to have from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, one of the lead authors of the report, Dr. Catherine Raspberry. And Dr. Raspberry is a health scientist in the CDC's Division of Adolescent in school health. Dr. Raspberry, thanks so much for joining us from Atlanta. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we fortunately were able to review and look at this uh, study, found it extremely interesting. What prompted you to do, to do the study? Well, there's a lot of research that exists in the field that looks at the relationship between health and academic achievement, but there hadn't been any very recent studies with national data. So in this new study, we were able to use data from the 2015 cycle of the Youth Risk Behavior Survey to look at a wide variety of health risk behaviors and academic achievement. So specifically, in terms of academic achievement, we were looking at grades in school. So things like mostly A's, mostly B's, C's, D's, F's, that sort of thing. How many people were included in the scope of your study? So the 2015 cycle of the YRBF included 15,624 students in grades 9 through 12. And this was a survey, I assume? Yes, it is a school-based survey of high school students. Well, wait, we obviously want to know what you found, but can you tell us what surprised you the most, if anything? Well, I'll say these findings were very much in line with what we had seen in previous studies, and they really highlight the close connection between health and academic achievement. But this study is particularly important because it is based on the most up-to-date national data and because in most cases the relationships that it shows between health and academic success were statistically very strong. Give us some of the major takeaways from the study, if you would, please. Sure. So generally speaking, this really confirms, like we said, that health and academic achievement go hand in hand. As you'd mentioned earlier, regardless of sex or race, race and ethnicity, grade level, students who reported lower grades experienced greater health risks on a variety of factors from nutrition and physical activity, to substance use and sexual risk behaviors, and even violence and suicide related behaviors. So I'll give you a couple of examples of those. So students who reported receiving mostly Ds and Fs were nine times more likely than students who received mostly As to report that they had ever injected any illegal drugs. Similarly, we saw that students with mostly Ds and Fs were four times more likely than students with mostly As to say that they had had four or more sexual partners. And again, those types of findings extended even to the topics like nutrition and physical activity. So, for example, we saw that students with mostly A's, so higher grades, were twice as likely as students with mostly D's and F's to say that they had had breakfast every day for the past week. So across this wide range of behaviors, we see very consistently that the, um, the higher grades are reported with better health behaviors, lower grades are associated, excuse me, with poorer health behaviors. I guess in a way this isn't too surprising, is it, really? It's, like I said, it's very much aligned with what we've seen in previous research. So. And, and what about uh, the correlation with, with parents uh, and parenting? Uh, That's were a you... great question. So we did not specifically look at parents in this study. The YRBF does not include data from parents. But we do know that parents have a really important role um, in helping the health and academic success of the youth. So we know that engaged parents can help guide their children successfully through school. 
We know that they often speak up for their children to make sure that they get the experiences and resources and services they, they need. And they can do a lot to help schools create healthier school environments. In what ways might that, uh, you know, be up to the school or be an opportunity for the school to improve the situation? So we really recommend the use of a model called the whole school, whole community, and whole child model. And that focuses on a child's cognitive, physical, social, and emotional development to help improve both health and learning in schools. And that model reflects an important role for parents to be engaged in shaping all types of health processes that happen in the school for youth. So everything from the physical activity and health education curriculum to what's served in the cafeteria. So it covers a wide range of pieces of environment in the school. Do you think that there is a way, and I suspect you're working on this, a way for the, the CDC to help these kids achieve better grades and improve their health behaviors? And if so, how, how, do, you do, how do you go about doing that? Well, the CDC actually does a lot to help schools work on um, the health of youth in their schools. We believe that schools really have an opportunity to improve student health and simultaneously support their overarching educational goals. So we have a number of resources that are available for schools and school staff to help them with this. We have data. We have a lot of data, actually. <laughs> we have data on student health behaviors, but we also collect data on the health and safety policies and programs that are in place in schools. In addition to that, we have analysis tools that school staff and their communities can use to look at their health and physical education curricula and make choices about selecting and um, implementing curricula that's particularly strong. We also have trainings and professional development that's available for school staff. We have materials on increasing parent engagement and student connectedness, as well as materials on local wellness policies and bullying policies and other, other sorts of supports for students. Did this allow you to conclude that one of the goals is, is a priority over the other, such as improving grades first or trying to improve the socioeconomic situation of the students first so that subsequently their grades would then come up? So I think that gets a little bit to the idea of sort of does one of these behaviors come before the other? Right. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that in our study, we simply confirmed that the two behaviors, that the two things are related. So health behaviors are absolutely related to grades. Our study wasn't able to look at causation because of the nature of the data that we use. But we do know from other research that many factors influence health and many factors influence academic achievement. So the two are definitely related. And generally speaking, the body of scientific evidence on health and education shows us that causal relationships can go both ways between those two things. So that is to say that better health can lead to better education outcomes, and better education outcomes can lead to better health. Well, <clears throat> it makes a lot of sense. Now, will there be a way for you to measure that uh, what you are doing is helping these kids? So we actually do help schools in, in some instances um, evaluate their programs, but that's not covered within the scope of this particular study. All right. Well, interestingly, interesting to say the least. And, and basically, the bottom line is that health behaviors and academic achievement go hand in hand, as you've said. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much for sharing your insights with us. Well, thank you very much. Yep. You bet. Dr. Catherine Raspberry, uh, we've been talking about health behaviors and academic achievement. She is from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks again, Dr. Raspberry. Thank you.